ಅವಗಸ್ಟ್ ಆದಿಲ್ ಚಿಂತನ್ ವಾಲಾ ಹಿಸ್ ಫುಲ್ ನೇಮ್ ಎಂ ಟಿ ಹೋಮಿಯೋಪತಿ ಹೋಮಿಯೋಪತಿ ಕಾರ್ಡಿಯೋಲಜಿಸ್ಟ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚೀಫ್ ಫಿಸಿಷಿಯನ್ ಆದಿಲ್ ಹೋಮಿಯೋ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಸಿಟ್ಟಾ ಬುಲ್ಡಿ ನಾಗ್ಪುರ್ ಡೆಲ್ಹಿ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಡೈನಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ನೋಟ್ ಇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಅಪ್ಡೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಎಂ ಬಿ ಬಿ ಎಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಆನರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ನಾಗ್ಪುರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿ ಎನ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡನ್ ಬಿ ಎಚ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಷನ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಎಂ ಡಿ ಮೆಡಿಸಿನ್ ಹೋಮಿಯೋಪತಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಾಬಾ ಸಾಹಿಬ್ ಅಂಬೇಡ್ಕರ್ ಮರಾತ್ವಾದ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಔರಂಗಾಬಾದ್ ಎಗೇನ್ ವಿತ್ ಆನರ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ನೋಸ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಗೇನ್ ಆನರ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಹಿ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ರೆಸಿಡೆಂಟ್ ಫಿಸಿಷಿಯನ್ in the department of cardiology at the post graduate institute of medical science and super specialty hospital nagpur he is pursuing phd homeopathic medicine adding more feathers to his cap he is the secretary of the national academy of homeopathy india and is in charge of its clinical and academic activities and projects he heads the department of clinical medicine of the academy he is looking after the overall administration and the conduction of the post graduate homeopathic residential schools and the late dr j n kanjilal memorial workshops he is also the project in charge of statistical come clinical research project entitled the scope of homeopathy in cardiological disorders he has delivered lectures on homeopathy in cardiology at national and international seminars and symposiums in California, USA, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Australia, Morocco, etc. His contributions to the academics of homeopathy range from publishing books to being a regular contributor to various national and international journals and souvenirs. He is the recipient of Dr. Hanneman Award for Excellence in Homeopathy given at the International Congress of Holistic Health. her healing at nagpur and avantika dhanvantari award given by chikitsa sansar at ujjain was awarded the prestigious homeopathy tree for excellence in the chosen field of medicine in lucknow he is also the sub editor of national journal of homeopathy mumbai recently he again received the star of homeopathy with the, his father dr kasim chintanwala at university of west london in the united kingdom he conducted the international schools in australia in the cities of brisbane and melbourne where in many homeopathic doctors and students benefited he even conducted international schools for a period of four months where in students and doctors stay and learn continuously at his national academy of homeopathy india he even conducted training programs in their home country in australia morocco malaysia etc he is the author of 10 textbooks of homeopathy he has been appointed as mentor and pg guide to give complete guidance to post graduate students in homeopathy by the hanuman college of homeopathy united kingdom these are some of his uh descriptions what i want to say so dr adil uh you are welcome most welcome to our platform with we are very much happy and uh, uh, thank you for coming this platform and and uh, you can do your lecture for last uh, for now 45 minutes after that there will be a discussion part thank you you are most welcome ladies and gentlemen okay. thank you That's so right. much uh, international forum of promotion of homeopathy for inviting me here and uh, i can see uh, dr suresh kumar uh, he's be, he's come to our school the school which we have con- we conducted here at nagpur way back and in 20 i mean 10 or 15 years ago so ladies and gentlemen uh, i am a practicing homeopathic cardiologist a tag line is dil ki seva adil se dil ki seva dil means in hindi uh, heart and adil is my name and seva is uh, to serve so serving the heart with adil adil serves the heart well i am available on youtube on my channel dr adil jimthana wala and instagram adil homeo center so for all uh, my lectures you can visit there hanuman time hanuman when hanuman started homeopathy when he started practicing homeopathy the cases during hanuman's time were very simple 
natural curable cases. Like if you used to, uh, he has given uh, about 93 cases in life and letters of Hanuman, and you'll see small, small cases. But today when the patient comes to us, they come with a lot of fly files and they start, I've got hypertension since 10 years, diabetes since six years, ischemic heart disease since three years. And if you ask them, what is your suffering? What exactly are your symptoms? No, doctor, I don't have any symptoms. Now, the biggest problem with homeopaths is because we have to prescribe not on the name of the diseases, the nosological name of the diseases, we need to prescribe on the symptomatology. And today we are living in the era of evidence-based homeopathy. Like whatever you speak, it is not only a sense of well-being. I also need to prove it on pen and paper that suppose if a patient has come to me with high cholesterol levels, I should be able to decrease his cholesterol levels exclusively with homeopathy. Likewise, so today the diseases are very complex, multi-myosmetic, lifelong, may be psychosomatic, psychoneurotic, cardiac, metabolic. And of all these, it is the cardiac disorders, which are the epidemic of the 21st century. And more so, this COVID, the two years of COVID has amplified cardiovascular diseases to another level. Initially, when COVID started, it was thought to be a simple viral infection affecting the lungs. But today, my dear friends, it is well established that it is not a viral infection of the lungs. In fact, it affects the RBCs. It breaks the RBCs. And that is the reason why we measure D-dimers. We measure D-dimer was an investigation before COVID only and exclusively done in ICCU level when the patient was dying when multi-organ failure was taking place. And now with COVID, everyone is doing D-dimer. The relevance of D-dimer means that the patient is, uh, there's a thrombotic tendency. Serum ferritin levels. Serum ferritin levels are absolutely rare. Only in very certain cases we used to do serum ferritin levels. But now with advent of uh, uh, COVID, everyone is measuring serum ferritin levels, meaning thereby because ferritin is produced to such a uh, high extent and it was this due to breaking of RBC. So, we have seen innumerable cases of uh, stroke, fresh uh, infarctions, fresh thrombosis, deep vein thrombosis, and so on and so forth with COVID. So that is the reason why homeopathy has to be placed and homeopaths have to come forward. It is not only simple asperger's pharma and uh, carbovage arsenic, which was to help in, uh, uh, the ventilator uh, people. It's a time now to heal these problems people. People who have got these thrombotic tendencies. So, cardiac disorders are epidemic in the 21st century, and most important, especially in India and in the subcontinent, and people NRIs. Target population for India has always been less than 50 years. Just imagine an 18 years old boy starts uh, giving his 12th board, goes into some profession, say, for example, he becomes a doctor. By 23, 25 years, he, he completes his graduation, a post-graduation by 26, 27 years, gets a job or sets up his practice or whatever by age of 20, 30, 35, 30, marriage, and by 35, he gets a heart attack. Just imagine the situation. And this is not one in a, uh, once a phenomenon, it's a general phenomenon for Indians and Indian, uh, uh, Indians residing abroad. And that is the reason why Indians particularly need to focus the role of homeopathy in cardiology, cardiac disorders. And we have got so much to give, so much to give. And I need a whole day to tell you what to give, unfortunately. But here, certain facts, India is number one in ischemic heart disease cases, followed by China. It is not because that we have got a lot of the population of India is the maximum in the world now. We have overtaken China. That's not the case. We have... This ischemic heart disease, it's in Indians, it starts at the age of eight years, seven to eight years, six, seven, eight years. It begins there, it is manifested by 40, 45, 50 years of age, depending upon the expression of this gene. The gene is 9P21 thrifty gene. Now, what do you mean by thrifty? Thrifty, thrifting, thrifty means we do not spend. So, like sickle cell disease, like sickle cell disease, there was a mass. Um, I mean, uh, mutation <clears throat> in Africa, 
to protect the population against falciparum malaria. That is the reason why nature took over and uh, gave you sickle cell disease. Whereas in India, <clears throat> we were ruled by the Britishers since a very long time. So roughly between the early 19th century, what happened was we believe that the mass mutation took place and 9P2130 gene was activated. Now, what does this gene do? Today, when I have a lot of things to eat, I will store this cholesterol in the form of low-density lipoprotein cholesterol and triglycerides in my liver so that tomorrow if there are famine comes or if um, uh, floods come, my fat will be used. So this was the entire purpose of this mutation of 1921 gene. Now, since uh, we have become independent and since past 20, 25 years, even I mean, I mean, poorest of poor people have at least good food to eat. Whatever the quality of food is good. And we still have breakfast, lunch and dinner. Our physical activity has gone down drastically. Our exposure to sun and vitamin D deficiency, D3 deficiency have gone up uh, and uh, uh, exposure to sun has gone down drastically. And still our eating habits is same. Our mental work has go gone up. The stress level has gone up. And yet breakfast, lunch and dinner, in spite of the fact, humans, just imagine, humans are the only animals who eat on time, when the time is there. The rest, all animals will eat when they are feeling hungry. This is a very sad thing. And the first thing when a patient, cardiac patient comes to me is that I always tell them, drink when you are thirsty. Eat when you are hungry and not because it is 12 o'clock time, 12 to, uh, time to eat or it's breakfast time to eat. No, time should not dictate. Your hunger should dictate you. Many people have the explanation, Dr. Zab, if I don't eat, then uh, I will become weak. So you can't presume, let your body handle things. Why don't, why does a mind presume where I will happen, where something is going to happen to me? Is nothing. So the hunger, thirst, urine, sleep, everything is there. And if the body feels, it will help and it will uh, uh, create this uh, urge. But this 9B2150 gene has been activated throughout Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Gujarat to uh, Assam. And it is the strongest marker of ischemic heart disease, making young Indians, the Indian population, lean obese. Lean obese means we look lean. We are not very fat, but our blood is very thick, very dense. And that's why if you see in allopathy, they will give you two blood thinners. Like for one disease, you should have one drug. You'll have aspirin as well as clopidogrel for two because the blood is quite thick. This is quite unlike, like if, if you want to give a blood, a blood thinner, give one blood thinner, no. Either aspirin give or give clopidogrel, why give two? But in Indians, it is given. Obesity and ischemic heart disease is highest in Punjab, Kerala and Goa. Acanthosis nigricans is a vital sign. What is acanthosis nigricans? Acanthosis nigricans, like if you can see my uh, dark circles below my eyes, they are acanthos nigricans. Likewise, people have got on their, uh, you can have any black patch on uh, the, it's not a skin disease. It's an expression of the constitution that I carry the gene, that the constitution carries the gene of overexpression, ischemic heart disease or early uh, diabetes or early uh, hypertension or early stroke or early kidney disease, anything. And when I say early, I mean it's less than 40 years. So in young population. So acanthosis nigricans is a very vital sign, at least for homeopaths to see. If a patient is having acanthosis nigricans, I just need to give him or her the constitutional uh, medicine or followed by the nosote. And I believe we can do so much for protecting the patient against uh, heart diseases. In all our experience of the past 25 years, we started our uh, clinic in, uh, I mean, specialization in homeopathic cardiology in 1997. And Today, in 2023, it was, I mean, when we started, it was people should make fun. That homeopathy itself is a, uh, I mean, a disease, uh, is a system, is a super special system. Why you need to further subclassify like allopathy, cardiology, neurology, uh, dentistry, and uh, gynecology, etc. The reason is because cardiology itself or neurology itself is becoming so vast and deep and so different types of presentations are there so that for a general homeopathic practitioner, it's practically impossible to give complete, uh, at least for study, 
these subsections are needed. So after so many years, 23 to 25 years, I can say that we can not only treat heart disease, but also reverse in most cases, particularly atherosclerotic heart disease, hypertensive heart disease. Now it is very, very wrong to say that once your BP medicines have started, you have to take it for lifelong. No, no. If you go to homeopath, he or she treats you with a constitutional homeopathic therapy, it is quite possible, it's quite possible that you may need to withdraw and you may stay without medications uh, permanently. And still your blood pressure is normal. Not only that, you will be free from complications. So the time has come when homeopathy has to be put forth in scientific manner. Too much reliance of homeopaths on reports. Like the other system of medicine, like modern medicine, we totally, I mean, now homeopaths are mostly focusing, <clears throat> like evidence-based homeopathy does not only mean papers. It has to have feeling of well-being. Individualization has to be there. The basic tenets of homeopathy cannot be compromised at all, absolutely. And homeopathy believes in individualization. Homeopathy believes in PQRS, peculiar cure rare symptoms. Homeopathy believes in symptoms rather than the names of the diseases. Yes, for statistical purposes or for research purposes, we may need to take help of those names like ischemic heart disease and hypertensive heart disease. But in homeopath homeopathy is to understand what I mean. The words may be same hypertension, but for homeopath, I, the approach to hypertension and a modern medicine approach to hypertension is totally different. I'll show you a slide, in fact. So too much reliance of homeopaths on reports is alarming. We don't need to go uh, as uh, other system medicine, which need to go, how homeopaths should go. Myasmatic evolution. Before Hanuman died, that is, he died in, say, on 2nd July. So uh, somewhere in May or somewhere in April of that same year, he wrote a book in which he exhorted the homeopaths that those who practice on the theory of myasms, it is my last wish, that is Hanuman's last wish, that a true homeopath should practice on the theory of myasms. So for all these years we have been seeing, and we have written a book, textbook of, homeopathic, uh, uh, textbook of myasm, is a book written by uh, us, Dr. Kasim Jimthanawala, my father. And uh, if you want, it's available on Amazon. But the myasmatic evolution is there. This is the book. So factors responsible are predisposing factors, the modes of life and liver, living, hypertensive state, everyone is stressed out. In schools, we are not taught how to de-stress. We are taught mathematics, we have taught geography, history, we have taught, we have taught, taught English, and we are taught all subjects which in life, later life, are not very much important. I mean, they don't come uh, very handy. But the basic thing in life, we are not taught in school how to handle stress. And in the Indian population, in the Indian population, when atherosclerosis is a reality, syndrome X is a reality. I see patients, I'll, I'm showing you, I'll give you a case of a 18 years old male covering, coming with heart attack in just in February, this February 2023. Now, 18 years, he's not even started his life and he's coming with a heart attack. What is this? Where are we going? Where is India going? Now, for us, since I see heart patients daily on a daily basis, for me, it's not something new, but then this is a reality and it should be accepted and we have to work as uh, one. And I can now uh, uh, I mean, enlarge this, not only in India, but even in Indian subcontinent, as, as far as Malaysia, Southeast India, uh, sorry, Southeast Asia, all these people are suffering with uh, premature atherosclerosis. So hypertensive states, addictions, not only I'm talking about addictions of mobiles and addictions of social media and addiction of validation, addiction of drugs. We can't even handle pain, a simple pain. And we try to, uh, I mean, we don't give the chance to the body to fight the fever, fight the pain, fight something. We have to take some measures or the other. Or the other. So this is not, called, this actually evolves the miasm. And once the miasm is evolved, and that is the reason why your disease is going to evolve. Symptomatic treatment, unnecessary suppressions, mental, emotional suppressions, uh, suppressions of the diseases by so many ointments and so many uh, surgeries. Vaccination. 
Now, loads of vaccination as only for the disease is concerned, like measles vaccine or mumps or uh, COVID vaccinations, or I mean, only the disease, these each vaccination starts evolving the biasm. That is our uh, experience. Then we have got mal grooming, competition, occupation, diet, living. So these are the factors which have evolved the uh, all these metabolic disorders, uh, so called. So way back in 1997, we started the scope of homeopathy in cardiology, and uh, my late gurus, uh, they were one, uh, the Dr. J. N. Kanjilal, Dr. S. K. Dubey, whose uh, Matra Medica is read throughout India, Dr. Dubey's Matra Medica, Dr. Vitholgus. So we started, and this is a hospital where uh, we uh, have this uh, research project, scope of homeopathy in cardiology. So what is the scope? So as far as cardiology is concerned, ischemic heart diseases right from angina, whichever type of angina, stable or instable, but not AMI. AMI means acute myocardial infarction. So legally also and homeopathically also, although I have a, a protocol for acute myocardial infarction managing, but then publicly I can, can claim that acute myocardial infarction can be managed with homeopathy. As far as the thrombolysis is concerned, we need to refer it to uh, higher centers. But anginas, all sorts of angina can be easily managed with homeopathy, stable and unstable, and you can actually decrease the pain or whatever the symptom of angina it is. Hypertensive state. Now, a homeopath understands hypertension in a very broad manner. It's a state of disposition. And not only is a state of disposition, like for example, if my parents, both my mother and father have got hypertension, then I've got 45% chances of having hypertension. So today, if I don't have hypertension, I'm in a pre-hypertensive state. The pre-hypertensive state means <clears throat> I'll get irritable very fast. Then uh, the places where other people are not sweating, I'm an unusual sweating. I will stress out with what in uh, modern medicine, you can call it type A personality, all the Argentine matricums, all the Nux vomicas, then all the natural mures who keep on brooding, reserve disposition, pujas, lycopodiums who are very ambitious. All these are prone to hypertension. And suppose if these uh, drugs, a constitutional drug is given at this time of time before it is actually detected to have, you are detected to have hypertension, you can break the tendency here. And this is a very, very important thing which we can do as homeopath, and that is vaccinate our population against these metabolic disorders. Hypertension is one of the costliest diseases uh, known to uh, humankind. Not only once it is diagnosed, every uh, few months or few weeks, you have to go to the doctor. Forget about the, uh, I mean, it, it, that, that uh, you don't count the cost for uh, going and coming. That is the petrol which is used, the time which is lost for work, then the complications you suffer, the money you pay for the uh, tablets. Everything is multiple. So hypertension and ischemic heart disease are very costly disease to have, and it gives a, not only the burden to the uh, burden to the individual uh, person, that means the who's uh, the person patient, but also the entire family and the economy. So as homeopaths, it is imperative that we, uh, if we know that the person has got a very strong family history of ischemic heart disease, hypertensive disease, we can just take them, give them a constitutional therapy, and they will be treated. Valvular heart disease. Now, there are so many people in India and even abroad who, see, well, initially before I started working, I always used to think when I was in my, doing my uh, DNP medicine in allopathy, I used to think the wall, now, if, uh, with, if this wall will become so small, you cannot open up with, with medicine or with any medicine. It needs surgery, right? That was totally wrong. When I came into practice, I saw many people can't afford surgeries. One. Affording it is uh, there. Second, many people may be able to afford surgeries, but then they are mentally, they have a block that with surgery can um, do more harm than good. Third, certain con heart conditions or other conditions may not allow me to undergo surgery. Now, what all these three patients, these, these group of patients, what are they going to do? If allopaths can manage them, or Ayurveds can manage them with uh, their therapy, homeopaths can very effectively manage them. At least we can palliate such patients. 
palliation. We have wonderful drugs. We have got rubrics in our repertory. So many rubrics in the repertory which uh, pertain to valvular disease. Drugs like Naja, Sikuta, Rustox, Nutswamika, Spartium, Sulf. I mean, loads of drugs. And we can not only manage till the person has surgery, but. <laughs> Uh, okay, then rhythm disorders, arrhythmias. So the heart beats lap, tap, lap, tap, lap, tap. Okay, but sometimes it will be very fast, sometimes it will be very slow. So we have got tachyarrhythmias and bradyarrhythmias. Brady means slow rhythm disorder, and tachy means fast rhythm disorders. Now, they can be generated in the atrium. So you can have atrial uh, or supraventricular arrhythmias or you can have ventricular arrhythmias. The ventricular arrhythmias, homeopathy does not have that much scope. We need a DC shock if the patient is having ventricular arrhythmias. But if we have got supraventricular arrhythmias, believe me, friends, not one, not two, not 10. We have got at least 60 to 65 different types of drugs for different types of arrhythmias. Our department of uh, uh, cardiology, we have got specific section for arrhythmiology and they give fantastic re results. I mean, if you are supposed to ask uh, I mean, pacemakers and if you're still, we have prevented so many people for uh, I mean, not being installing a pacemaker and all. And they are perfectly well, not for day one, day two, for years together. But that you can't generalize it. It is all patient based. Then congestive cardiac failure. Just now, now I'm going to present a case of congestive cardiac failure. Right from birth to, uh, and India is the world capital of diabetes. So in diabetes, if you have a heart attack, you don't complain. There's no pain. So the patient only thinks, oh, I'm getting heart, I'm having acidity. I'm just having choking. Uh, I'm having cervical spondylosis. These are vague symptoms, okay, in a diabetic. Actually, the patient must be having a heart attack. So the patient does not go to the doctor. He takes a painkiller or he takes an antacid or something and the thing stops. But when he goes to the doctor and he's, they do an echocardiogram, the pumping capacity of the heart, which is initially should be at least 60 to 80%, has come down to 30-35%. So this is congestive cardiac failure. This is one of the commonest reasons for congestive cardiac failure in young Indians suffering from ischemic heart disease. What do you do? You are young. You are 35 years old. You have to a lot of things in your hand. You have got two small children. You have to bring them up. You have to work and you have to work hard. And your heart has failed. And they're telling you to put a pacemaker. A pacemaker, but how? We, when, uh, it's, after all, it's a foreign thing. The battery will stop someday. So can we help such patients in homeopathy? In India, it's not feasible for heart-lung transplant. They say heart-lung transplant, but it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a very beautiful dream. And even after doing heart lung transplant, forget of the money. Money, okay, if it's arranged. But if uh, after doing heart lung transplant, the body should accept the heart and lung. If they're rejected, then everything is gone, waste. So can homeopathy do something about CCF, congestive cardiac failure? Yes. Substantially, yes. And for years together, yes. We have got good medicines which can help the patient to live a so-called near normal life. Work. Work at their own pace. Congenital heart disease, same like valvular heart disease, congenital heart disease. Not all patients can be operated. Not all patients want to be operated. Not all patients are financially stable to be operated. So does that mean that all VSDs, all ASDs, all uh, patent ductus arteriosus or all tetralogy of fallows need to be operated? No. With homeopathy, we can, uh, till surgery, till they decide for surgery, we can at least help them live a so-called near normal life. Although we may not be able to operate in all cases. Infections. Now, COVID has given us a chance to treat myocardial infarction. Infarction is different. Infection is different. So myocarditis, there are lots of endocarditis, myocarditis, and pericarditis patients. And uh, we could if effectively manage uh, them. Heart is generally affected due to other diseases like diabetes. Heart and the arteries are affected. Autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, they can affect the heart. Certain drugs, allopathic drugs, like uh, anti-cancer therapies. Just now, I am having a patient, and uh, she is a school teacher. She uh, last year, uh, last uh, April, um, 
she is a school teacher, middle school teacher and uh, 45 years old female. And she started having uh, nodules in the breast. She went for a checkup and she was found to have cancer of the breast. So they started, uh, I mean, uh, they did not do surgery. They started, they, they said, let us first uh, uh, give you a chemotherapy. So the first uh, month only itself, they give, uh, there's a uh, regime. And in that there's a drug called adriamycin or donorobicin. And that was given and she started uh, developing breathlessness. And soon they found out that the pumping capacity had reduced to 20% to zero. Initially, before starting therapy, she was completely normal. She was investigated. Now what do you do? You cannot give any other drug for cancer therapy. And then you are ending up the patient with uh, this uh, donor robustin. I mean, uh, heart failure. So she was referred to me by modern medicine. Dr. Adil, do you have something for this patient? It's been one year. The pumping capacity has increased from 20% to 26%. She is working. She can't afford to stay home. She can't afford a pacemaker. She has got two children. She has got a daughter who is about to be married. Just imagine the state of the And she has got no earning. Hardly any, any. A middle school teacher does not get much pay. And her husband gets it. So both are managing somehow. So we not only treated her cancer breast, we are treating, but we are also treating her heart failure itself. So two in one, homeopathy can do that. So drugs, single symptoms like breathlessness, excessive breathlessness. And it is amply proved. For example, Asperosperma was a rare drug in homeopathy before COVID. And now every single homeopath knows about Asperosperma, carbovage, arsenic in the role of decreasing breathlessness and increasing SpO2. Cough, bleeding, shock, and so on and so forth. So scope of these are the... Uh, areas where homeopaths should come forward. It only needs guts. Skills and knowledge are secondary, but first need guts that I want to do and I can do it. Hurdles for homeopath, there's no formal practical training for managing emergencies. We claim we have got some fantastic drug, but then you need for managing emergencies. That's the reason why we have opened up schools. We, I train people. I, they, you come to me. It's not only lectures, you come to me for learning homeopathy, stay with me for 10, 15 days. In fact, uh, in June, from 11th of June to, the, to 18th of June, we have a summer school. I invite any one of you. I don't need your qualifications. If you, the only qualification is intense love for homeopathy and you should be open to learning. Come with me, discuss. I may be wrong, so prove me wrong. And we discuss on live patients. We don't discuss on hypothetical theoretical patients. Remedies are not proved to the level of uh, uh, biochemical pathological changes. There are legal implications. Homeopaths are untrained in legal formalities as well. So we need to step up and do this procedure. Friends, we have established a full-fledged setup at Nagpur, Mumbai, and Bangalore dedicated to service of cardiac patients with homeopathy. We have tie-ups with different ICCUs. We have got skills and gadgets for case assessment, drug delivery systems, Many in short, short and long clinical studies and publications have been done by us. We have reproved 32 homeopathic drugs. And every single year I take, I prove, reproved, I don't prove new drugs. I reprove the old drugs because in Indian context, I want to know the role of Rustox and Bryony and Belladonna. It is for me to know my own drugs, which I've been using, which have been which already improved in US and UK and Germany and Europe. I want to reprove it in Indian population. Several new rubrics have been introduced. We have published 10 books. We have MOUs with various universities in, uh, abroad. We have established protocols, ISRA, infarction, diabetes protocol, the renal protocol, hypertension protocol yes, for sir, general practitioners. Pilot studies have been done. Three-year Naja studies, heart failure studies, pulse home trial. Greater use of nosodes, sarcodes, tautopathy, external applications in homeopathy. Educating specialists for other systems. Problem with other uh, with allopaths is they, do, they don't hate homeopathy. They just don't know about homeopathy. They just they want they believe in evidence based homeopathy. We just have to show them evidence, and they will uh, open up with open arms. They will accept homeopathy. We have to inculcate sense of confidence in homeopathy. That's what we are doing. Emergencies can be handled with homeopathy. For the first time in the history of homeopathy, we have deciphered specific drugs for specific ECG and echocardiographic changes like this. These 
So different ECG changes, lobelia, lilium tick, magnolia, iodum, aconite. So we also need ECGs now. It is not only uh, symptoms. Homeopathy in veterinary and agriculture, agrohome, fantastic use of homeopathy in agriculture. We have been doing since past 200, in 2010, it's 2023, actually using homeopathy in fields, increasing the yields, killing the, uh, not killing, but treating the fungal infections and so many infections of the plants. Same way with uh, pets, research collaborations with uh, VNIT, Nagpur, King Fahad University. This is King Abdul Aziz University at Jeddah. I have gone, I have visited, they are all PhDs. They are interested in learning homeopathy, PhD in allopathy. We are doing collabs. This is the TED talk which I have given in 2019. So, my dear friends, homeopathy, particularly in cardiology, has a lot to offer. Since my time is ending, I'll just end with a small interesting case and so that you come to know that uh, what exactly homeopathy can do. Hello, Assalamualaikum. This is Aisha from Australia. Can you hear it? Please? And the reason I'm making this video is because I want people to know how amazing yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. homeopathy is. I have been using homeopathy for several years for acute conditions, but never for serious chronic conditions. So last year, July 2022, my daughter, who was then 18 months, she was in the ICU for a month and another month at the hospital at the ward. Her heart condition had seriously declined and was considered a heart failure because her injection infection was under 30%. It was around 25 to 30. That's the range it was on for a couple of months at the hospital. And we also had a meeting with the doctor and they wanted us to be ready for an option of heart transplant. And obviously we panicked and I immediately contacted my homeopath to find me a um, homeopath anywhere in the world who can treat this condition. So she recommended me, she contacted Dr. Adil from India and he he was ready to see Amna. We had our appointments, our remedies. We had um, started on the remedies, the image why she was at the hospital. Fast forward to now, January, uh, February 2023. Her ejection fraction is, alhamdulillah, 47%. So it's almost um, a normal heart condition now which is unbelievable because when you were getting discharged from the hospital, we had a meeting with the doctors and when I asked about how long she has to take the medications, they said it can be for a very long time. And one medication they said it can be for life, for a lifetime. And that medication which they said it's gonna be for a lifetime, they have actually stopped because her heart condition has improved so much. And they are soon saying that her other medications would also stop pretty soon because of the way her heart is progressing. So this shows how incredible homeopathy is. And I would like to thank Dr. Ade for taking up the case and you know just alhamdulillah like helping Amla improve. And so friends, so friends, this is what I want to show you. If I can do it here at Nagpur, I believe every single homeopath can do it. Homeopathy is not a miracle. It's a science and science is replicable. If I can do, you can also do. If you cannot do, there's not science. So with this note, 
It's a positive note on this forum where promotion of homeopathy is the main aim. I wish you all the very best. I am always there with you. Of course, this was a small glimpse. And if you permit me, I can train you. And um, I think we can do many, many good things with homeopathy. Since I'm doing with cardiology, people can do with hepatology and other neurology and other cases. But yes, we have to go forward. This is our time. The next 10 years is for homeopathy. So let's celebrate homeopathy to the maximum. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. Uh, now somebody asking, please tell us uh, which medicines you prescribed for this case. Yeah. So uh, now, again, I'll tell you, <clears throat> this is a very unusual story, uh, unusual um, thing with homeopaths, which medicine you have prescribed. The medicine, again, I told you that homeopathy is an individualistic uh, science. So still, anyway, the, uh, this remedy prescribed to this girl was Adonis Ver. Adonis Ver. And with this Adonis Ver, not only Adonis Ver, initially I had to prescribe Antimtart when she was in the hospital. Antimtart stabilized her. But then Antimtart had a limitation. It stopped working. I had to shift to antimony hours. Again, for some time she was better. And then after the third thing, it was Adonis. So you can't have only one medicine because the uh, symptomatology kept on changing and she was in ICU. Uh, when she contacted me for one and a half months, she was in ICCU. And after, I mean, I started treatment, she was in ICU. And luckily for them in Australia, they permitted homeopathy use in ICCU. So, but then, yes, uh, over a long period of time, it was um, uh, adults work. Now, the biggest problem with like in country like India, everything is available. In Australia, they, they, uh, mother tinges are not, not available. So I had to give in potency, very low potency. One single pill, an 18 months old child, one, one pillule of Adonis was six. And this is the result which we have after three, four months. Somebody on what basis have you selected medicine? The basis, there are lots of bases. Number one is, uh, actually I have a study called PADS, P-A-D-S, PADS study, where we have compared Digitalis with Adonis were, uh, P is Faciolus Nana, a is Adonis work, D is Digitalis and S is Trophanthus. So Digitalis was the milestone because it's the main therapy for heart disease and the other three. And in which, uh, now this girl also has got uh, valvular disorder, congenital valvular disorder. So if you've got valvular disorders and failure, uh, the drug of choice is Adonis war and that's why it was prescribed uh, that way. How challenges, challenging is it to educate the patient to come up with the symptoms because they are um, uh, nowadays like uh, all are being trained uh, in by the modern medicine to give only the set of symptoms like cough fever i have this i took this medicine this is how they uh, present the case so how challenging is it to guide the patient to come up with the symptoms that's one part of the question number two have you any um, used any tautopathic drugs like aspirin and clopidogrel itself so is there any medicines available like that in tautopathy and have you, is it effective and useful uh, in cardiac cases? Fantastic question. Yeah. So that was the first thing which I said. People come to us, they give you loads of names of the diseases like high, hypercholesterolemia and all. So if you ask them symptoms, they don't have any symptoms. So initially when the patient comes to me, forget about acute cases, I'm talking about chronic cases. I don't uh, start the homeopathic treatment initially. What I tell them is because they have come with lifestyle disorders, first let us correct the lifestyle. Like for example, if the patient is taking uh, some churan, some uh, Ayurvedic uh, preparation for constipation. I said, forget about constipation. Like, sure. If you are not getting sweating, you are not going to get hyper. Today I have not sweat. I, I have not uh, got any sweat. You will consider whenever I feel uh, hot, sweat will automatically come. Same thing you have to educate the, 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 the patient. That even if you don't pass tools, it's don't get hyper. Like Calcare Cup is cool. Day one, day two, day three, four days. Uh, after four days, the passes tool. So you stop as many drugs as possible. All those symptomatic drugs. It may take one month. It may take three months. And it will be five months. Don't hurry. Give them chance. 
to uh, build a rapport and you, uh, that does not mean the patient will run away you can just give placebo till you're sure what medicine the patient is and slowly and steadily tell them what sort of uh, symptoms you want for case taking like tell them that please write down the dreams which you are going to have because then suddenly if you ask the patient doctor uh, 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 madam uh, what sort of dreams do you get they are not going to reply they have never been asked such a question it's rubbish to ask them they don't know that homeopaths need these things they will not know how many times the urine have got so we ask them to maintain a daily diary how many times what they have eating what do they like any aggravations from say for example it is a um, summer time now so i mangoes they have eaten so any aggravation of mangoes we slowly and steadily prepare them to give us history it may take one month's time if you are good it may take 10 minutes or uh, uh, 10 days one month two months and if they come from a uh, another homeopath they know what history to give so this is how you take symptoms okay so in acute cases suppose you want to prescribe then we don't take symptoms verbatim from the patient we have a state of disposition we see how the patient is i can see a chamomilla i can see an opium patient i can see an antim tart patient i can examine the tongue so instead of relying on the symptomatology of the sensations i would rather rely on my observation of the patient and still prescribe homeopathy in acute cases so acute and chronic both i am a uh, general um, medical doctor for general medicine and homeopathy in germany if i have patients who come let's say with a certain age this they have pressure on the heart they feel they feel not good with the heart Okay. Um, I don't know whether you agree because you are a cardiologist, you are a specialist, but I always think in that case also about emotional problems. Yes, because the heart is affected. Do you think the same? Absolutely. Heart is the mirror of mind. Mm -hmm. If my mind is unstable, in fact, heart attacks are always brought. They don't come. Heart attacks are never because of uh, blockages. the blockages can cause angina but moment the plaque ruptures inside and the plaque rupture needs the permission of the mind the stress the helplessness only then that's why uh, the first thing which i ask is why did you bring a heart attack i never ask the patient where is the pain i said why did you bring what happened before the heart attack some uh, tussles in your family something 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 which have uh, not spoken out something uh, you're overjoyed any emotional disturbance and if that is there my remedy selection is very fast so it's, it's very easy in fact you don't need to take the entire case ailments from are very very important also nowadays a lot of uh, uh, people particularly young people are getting stroke and uh, uh, this uh, cardiac arrest due to this uh, we, we people used to say that it is because of the vaccine and that it may be the reason but uh, uh, the other pe- other side the people from the other side say that it is not because of the covid but actually uh, the first one may be the right answer to that and and uh, is there any protocol uh, to you to control this uh, because we people used to say that you just uh, uh, test the d diameter test and so that you can find out that whether there is uh, any blockage or like that in your blood uh, if there is such a thing then homeopathy can manage like that what's your opinion on that sir well you are talking about ailments after vaccination right yes yes yeah so ailments after vaccination we have got several drugs like thuja like mizerium like silesia like uh, crotalis horridus like um, antim tart they all ailments after vaccination but none of them are working in the present scenario of covid when we are getting now it's pointless to fight with the authorities whether it is because of vaccine or whether it is because of covid we know it is because of vaccine but then we can't speak the voice we are made to silence that voice that's perfectly fine because the larger interest is maximum people should take that vaccine whatever happens with that vaccine people are, i mean other people are not worried about then but as doctors we need to see we need to see that if i can actually have a correlation between a vaccine and the uh, the symptom or that event then i i mean i cannot deny that so in in, in uh, nowadays ailments after this vaccine if if people are getting like this thrombotic events whether cve or mi or whatever 
The first drug we give is uh, Crotalis horridus. Crotalis horridus especially is the drug for choice for ailments after vaccination in this scenario. That is, a, Thuja and all is not acting. Even after giving Thuja, the symptoms don't go away and I mean, nothing happens. It's actually acting as a placebo. So, uh, Crotalis horridus has been a very, very effective tool. Is one of the first drugs we continue or start and then we may continue in LM potency. Okay, what about Arnica? Arnica ah. is uh, very symptomatic and very superficial acting. I mean, we need deeper drugs than Arnica. In my nearest house, See, one family, there, first of all, the uh, first man died of cardiac arrest. Then second man again died. Third man again died. Fourth man also died. Died, died of cyst. But first, when the first man died, other, other people were keeping their diet, their uh, mode of life, everything. I think it is maybe genetic. Genetic can be can homeopathy homeopathy can prevent it, uh, uh, get such a condition. Obviously, yes. Not only homeopathy. See, everything is not only medicine based. Your thought structure and the changing of lifestyle. If you have got, like, I told you, it's a genetic structure. This ischemic heart disease is a genetic disease. It's um, uh, this. Uh, uh, just now in the previous slide, I told you. So, if such a case is there. Not only with homeopathy, but the change of lifestyle. And we, when I say change of lifestyle, it not only mean physical lifestyle. Eat on time, give a restful sleep to your body. Uh, if you've got sexual issues, solve those sexual issues because you can't keep on continuing uh, with that. And then mentally, you should meditate. And according to your drug, you should meditate. Like all, nat all people are not like natromores and all people are not like calcare carbs. So they have got different sets of medication, med meditation. And last is a constitutional therapy. Now, it may not be possible for everyone to have cons can select constitutional therapy in everyone. And so what we do is we give them no swords. No swords are based on family history. Like if you have got family history of this sort, I would give one dose of tibuclinum or one dose of carcinosin and wait and watch. Only I'll take care that it should not be Purnima Amavasya. It should not be uh, full moon and new moon. Leaving those days, uh, I can give one dose and wait and watch. And we have seen, we can save the entire family also. BNP is a marker. Pro BNP is a marker. Atrial natriuretic peptide is a marker. Now, whenever the heart starts failing or there's myocarditis, that is the time when these two hormones uh, uh, pro BNP rises. And it's a very, very effective marker. And suppose like the PAD study, which I just told you, uh, Fasciolus Nana, <clears throat> Adonis War, Digitalis and Stopanthus in heart failure. So there are different types of heart failure. Okay. So heart failure means the pumping capacity of the heart is reduced. Now that can be managed, uh, can be, uh, I mean, uh, seen by different methods. Number one is symptoms. People will start having uh, breathlessness on exertion. They may have edema of the uh, face as well as the feet and all. That is symptomatology. They can have dry cough. Then second thing is you can do the echocardiogram and see the pumping capacity. The pumping capacity is called as ejection fraction, which is normally 60 to 80 percent in uh, average uh, uh, adults, Indians. It can reduce to uh, 30, 35, 40, 45 percent. Now, there's another third thing is the rise of these enzymes pro BNP or at atrial natriuretic peptide. Now, <clears throat> what happens is not all people have got uh, rigid, reduced ejection fraction. So we've got three types of cardiac failures. Number one is cardiac failure with reduced ejection fraction, less than 30%. Cardiac failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction between 30 to uh, 40%. And heart failure with normal ejection fraction, but very high enzymes. So all these are heart failure. But how did we diagnose heart failure? From the symptoms as well as the increase of enzymes. Now we have got specific medicines for increasing enzymes. As well as this increased enzyme state. Again, these pads. Now, Strophanthus and Adonis were specifically decrease these enzymes. So if they decrease the enzymes, they also decrease the heart failure. So my dear friends, it's very imperative for us to know that if we're dealing with heart patients, and particular heart failure patients, enzymes need to be uh, measured.